Hey people, so we've got the MSI Bravo here. We're going to quickly do a hands-on of the unit, new performance stuff. On the outside casing, you have the aluminium finish, so it's quite an elegant finish. On the side, again, quite thin. We've got the Ryzen 7 motor, so it's um, very powerful, up to eight cores. And of course, the ports is so fairly um, standard, so HDMI port charger on the left hand side. A few more ports on the right hand side. Um, if you do use a mouse, make sure you get a wireless one, otherwise um, you might find yourself bumping slightly into the device. Just to be compact, there's no ports on the back. So it's a very streamlined, quite a simple design. Um, nothing too excessively fancy. Now, opening up the laptop, you'll see that the bezel is actually remarkably thin for a gaming laptop. And of course, thankfully, the webcam on top, some of the more modern laptop have the webcam on the bottom or no webcam at all. So I think this is still by far preferred. This panel specifically is 120 hertz refresh rate. There's going to be other panels where it's a little bit different, either uh, slightly lower or slightly higher. It depends on what specification you get. On the inside, as you can see, it's the same aluminum finish, quite elegant. You can easily take this laptop into a meeting. Obviously, COVID, so fewer meetings. On the inside, the keyboard travel it initially reminded me of the uh, MacBook-ish design, so quite a thin travel, but quite a reassuring click. It takes a little while to get used to, but perhaps it might be a sensible idea if you plan to use the keyboard a lot, just get an external keyboard if it's on a desk most of the time. It's just you don't want the keyboard to wear too much, I suppose. On the trackpad, it's a relatively large surface, quite predictable travel. Would really have liked if there were a dedicated button, but I think most of the people using this laptop would probably have a gaming mouse or something similar. The reason why the laptop will be quite popular is likely to be this. And um, as you can see, it's a 16 threads and eight cores. When it runs Cinebench, it does get quite loud. Then again, the performance is quite remarkable for a laptop this thin and light. Not too long ago, if you think about the, the highest i7 9th gen option were a secret core, and this is quite a jump, especially at a more accessible price range without having to spend a lot more on the laptop. With Ryzen, it generally helps to have two sticks of RAM, so I think this unit came with um, 8 gig. There are two upgradable slots there at 3200, so if you match that, that'd be quite helpful. Of course, you can presumably go up to 2 times 32 if you want a lot more RAM, for instance, for editing. As you can see here, there's a 512 SSD. This will be a NVMe drive. There is a second M2 slot if you were to want to upgrade. The Wi-Fi card is also upgradable. Otherwise, nothing much is upgradable other than the battery. If I remember correctly, there are two options of the graphic card, so 5500M and 5300. The 55 is, um, you know, quite... Uh, so we've got the 55M graphics. Some people might prefer lower or higher end graphics um, from NVIDIA. Some people might not need a graphic card at all. I think what's really exciting about this is that if you didn't need the graphic component of it, then suddenly this CPU side of things is much more powerful than what you can traditionally get for the value. 8 core and 16 thread, I think you would have um, had to spend quite substantially when it came to the 10th gen um, i7. The 10th gen 875H is probably among the only more football i7s with 8 cores. This processor is probably likely to be very performant in comparison to it. It's quite exciting to see that level of performance in a more affordable body. The battery obviously going with managed expectation. If you do really high end workload, it probably drains in one, one half an hour. Um, if you were to do lighter workload, that's probably likely to let you do longer. But yeah, I quite like the finishes. Nice and elegant. I think it's quite a simple laptop if you just needed to do the work, get it done. And I think this is a very sensible option. You probably can find more premium finish or more expensive graphic cards. Obviously, the budget goes up. Overall, just to summarize, very, very performance focused if, you, um, if you're into the CPU stuff. If you're into GPU stuff, then you might um, want something more NVIDIA based. At the moment, there is no Thunderbolt 3, just a HDMI port. There's um, no display port. Obviously, you have the USBs. If you do buy now, you can probably find a good value um, system like this. And if you can wait a little bit longer into, let's say, mid of next year, then um, obviously the better thing is always around the corner. And I hope this helps. Have a lovely day. Take care.